Hey, and welcome back to another Revit Tools video. In this video, we're covering dimensions. Once again, this is part two of dimensions. This video will cover the radial, diameter, and arc length dimension types. Please go watch part one if you missed that. I covered all the different type properties for aligned, linear, and angular. Those type properties are going to also apply to this video because they're basically the same. I'll cover any differences that come up between the different dimension types, but really it's basically the same. I went over it con comprehensively in part one, so please go watch that. The link to that will be in the description below. In this video, we're covering the radial, diameter, and arc length, like I said already. But what I've got here is an arc. I've got an arc with some random windows placed in it. There, there's, no, there's really nothing specific to anything right here. It's just where I've placed it. I want to actually turn on thin lines so we can see this better, see the parts of the wall. And at this point, I need to dimension this. I want to actually locate where these windows are, the, you know, the distances and everything. So right now, if I click radial, just like with the align, linear, and angular, I have a default choice of where Revit is going to look. In this case, wall center lines, wall faces, whatever. I never bother changing that because I can always tab to different parts of the wall. So default, again, is center line right there. And if I just hover over this wall, the center line is selected. I can also tab to these different parts that are built into the wall. In this case, maybe I just want to use the finish. And as soon as I click it with the radius tool, I now have this radius. And it, there's really nothing else to do at this point. I can just end the radius right there. And I can see that dimension. I can also click that and change this dimension right there as a temporary dimension. Maybe I want to make this 12 feet so it looks a little better. At this point, I've got a 12 foot radius. If I click on this dimension, hit edit type again, please go watch part one. You see, these are all the same. There's really nothing that is different besides the leader type being an arc versus a line. That, I mean, these really are, really none of this is changed. This is all the same until you get down here to other where I have the option of unchecking center marks or center mark, changing the center mark size and radius symbol location. I can have that before or after. It doesn't matter where, wherever that, that symbol should go. And you can change this symbol to anything you want. You can make it any, really anything you want, just like that. It doesn't matter. I'll go ahead and undo that because it's pretty basic. It's just the radius tool again. Diameter. It's going to be the exact same as the radius tool. I don't need to spend that much time on it, but again, wall center line default. I can change that to any place, and as soon as I click that, I get this diameter showing up. I'll click that. I'll go back into the types there, and it's the same thing. I have the same other options down here for the type properties, except now I have a different symbol for a diameter wouldn't change that its diameter it's pretty clear what it is and that's it now finally the one that's probably the most powerful dimension tool in all of Revit is the arc length and now that walls can be made as arcs in Revit 2020 this is very important because I've dealt with walls as in, in arcs in projects it's it can be a pain but now with this arc length and walls being arcs like it's it's a breeze. It's like any other wall. It's like any other dimension. It's just you got to run through it once or twice to be able to see how it should work and what you should expect. So now I've got this arc length selected. And now, again, it's saying wall faces, wall center lines. It doesn't matter. I'm going to have this show up, this whole arc show up as the wall center line dash. So what I want to do is fine. The, the center line's fine. And what I get now is just this crossed out cursor but I'm not done doing anything I I've just the first thing the first click with the arc length dimension tool is to select an arc I have selected the arc now the arc is selected at this point I needed to determine where on this arc I'm dimensioning to and trying to get the length of so at this point, I want the length of the entire thing, but I also first want these different segments. So if you zoom in here, you can see this, the end point, the, the end of the, the wall, I can select that. And now 
I've essentially started the string. And I know you can't see, but I've just started the first, the, at the first length. And now I need to choose something else. So the next length I will choose, or the next place to get length, is gonna be the end of this window. I'll choose that. As soon as I do that, I now have this length showing up. And this length is going to span between these two elements that I've selected. So I'm just gonna go across the entire arc and select all the ends of these windows. And as I do that, you can see I get all these links that populate this dimension string. And finally the end there. And it works perfectly. I can get this string to show up wherever and however I want. So I might want it right there. And for the sake of clarity and being able to read and see this, I will make this a quarter inch. And so now we can see it all. It makes perfect sense. And just like what I did in part one, I'm going to change this to change the units to be an eighth because yeah, it's just it makes more sense. You're not going to measure to a 32nd all the time. Things make more sense now. And just like I did the dimension string for all of the, or I did one dimension string and have different witness lines to all these different ends of these windows, I can do one that's an overall because I'll also need an overall. I'll select the arc link tool. I'll select the arc. I'll select the start and end point and drag it up and that, that's it. So right now, from part one as well, the arc link works just like the align when it comes to snapping. I've actually set that snap to a quarter of an inch. And so this length is gonna be a quarter of an inch and it snaps perfectly and you know it's snapping because you can see that, that the dashed line continues all the way around the arc. So really, that is, I, it, that's it, and it's simple. And as I move these windows, the dimensions update. Like it, it's great. Arc length is awesome. And you can you can get these <laughs> you get these temporary dimensions that show up if I were to select this, and I can change this angle to 70 maybe, and it updates, and all these angles update. It, it's it's great. I can't think of a, <laughs> an easier way to deal with arcs because it can be kind of crazy and a little confusing to, to deal with arcs. I can even continue this arc, and as I do that, th these dimensions will update in, in real time, just like walls if it were an arc or not. It doesn't matter. So again, that's going to be part two of dimensions in Revit. I sure hope you learned something. If you did, please demolish that like button. It always helps me. Also, subscribe. Always love new subscribers. Hope I can help you and everyone else that subscribes. This is part two again. Part three, I'll cover the spot elevation, spot coordinate, and spot slope dimension types in Revit. Hope to see you in that one. Please check out part one if you didn't see that. You're awesome if you lasted this long in the video. Hope to see you in part three. Have a wonderful day and thanks for watching.